the Propex HS2211. Since I made a video on this, I have been literally inundated with an email asking questions about it. Now, seriously, I get about an email a week asking about various components of this setup, so I figured I'd make a video on it. If you've already bought one of these and you just want to skip through to see how I have set it up, then I'll put a timestamp kind of up here somewhere, like right there, so that you can skip ahead. If you haven't, I want to talk to you a little bit about it and why I chose to go with this, some of the positives and some of the negatives with it. First of all, why would you buy this? What are some of the advantages compared to like a buddy heater or a diesel heater? And what are some of the disadvantages? This heater runs off propane and it pulls air from your sleeping area into this hole on this side, runs that air through the unit and pumps it back out of this side that goes back to your sleeping area. And that air is kept completely separate from the combustion air, which has an air intake down here here and an exhaust over here. It uses a heat exchanger built into the unit here. And because the air that's heated and the air that's used for combustion are totally separate with the heat exchanger, it means that you get none of the exhaust gases going into your sleeping area. So you don't get any of the moisture from the burning of the propane and there's no risk of carbon monoxide either. Also, because this whole thing's self-contained and outside your tent, there's no open flames. So there's no risk of anything hot falling over and burning your tent down. And really the only hot part of it is, well, other than the hot air that comes out and goes to your tent is going to be the exhaust over here and that hangs out and I have that go over my windshield. This thing has a very low power draw as well. The only power it uses is the power to push the air around using the fans and it pulls about two amps anytime it's running. This uses less power than a diesel heater for several reasons. One of them is you've got the propane that's already pressurized so you don't have to have any kind of fuel pump going. This also has a spark that ignites the propane rather than running a glow plug every time you start up the heater or shut down the heater and because it's just instant to start up and instant to turn off, this thing will start off and turn off as and when it's needed using the thermostat. Uh, now I have the basic thermostat here where you basically just set a temperature, whether it's low, medium, high, that kind of thing using this dial here. You can get another thermostat that sets a specific temperature. Because this thing shuts off, it does mean it saves a lot of power because it's not running constantly, but that is one of the things I actually kind of liked about a diesel heater, because with a diesel heater, when it reached the temperature you had set, it would power down and just run it on low, so it's able to sustain that temperature. Whereas this thing, it's either on or it's off. So it's either heating full blast or it's not heating at all. And that means with a tent, it can kind of fluctuate a lot overnight and can end up being a little too hot, then a little too cold, then a little too hot again. Usually when I'm using this, I'll either have it set on the lowest setting just to take an edge off the cold, or if it's a really cold night, I'll just crank it up to full blast and accept that I'm gonna be really hot in the tent. In terms of the actual heat this produces, uh, it actually pumps out enough heat to make the vent here, the tip of the vent where this goes into my tent, uh, hot enough that it's kind of uncomfortable to touch. And I've been, it's been really good for, I think the lowest temperature I've used it in was in the mid-teens Fahrenheit, around negative 10 degrees Celsius and I had it on full blast and it's hot enough that I wasn't sleeping in my sleeping bag anymore. When I made my original video on this, I actually said that it produces more heat than my diesel heater and someone called me out for it and said that can't be true because this is rated at two kilowatts where my diesel heater was rated at three kilowatts, but it is true. And I think, unfortunately, that kind of speaks for the quality of the cheap Chinese diesel heater I had. And this thing's very economical. It really sips the propane. A 20 pound tank will last you about 60 hours of continuous runtime, which is, I mean, that's easily gonna last you a full week unless you're running it full blast every single night. And I think it does work out being a little more expensive than diesel, but I think it's worth it because propane is just so much easier to transport, or at least I think it's easier to stick in the back of the vehicle and go, um, especially after I spilled some diesel in the back of my forearm and it smelled really bad for weeks. Obviously, if you already have a diesel vehicle, you don't need to worry about transporting diesel because you can just tap into your main tank. Or if you've got a truck with an open bed, then I guess you can store diesel out there pretty easily. But for me, inside the vehicle, propane's the way to go. Just make sure you check your local laws. From what I understand, in the US, you can carry up to four 20-pound propane tanks in an enclosed vehicle. You just don't want to leave them in there if it's getting hot. Uh, but I had someone comment on my previous video saying it's actually illegal where they live to transport propane in an enclosed closed vehicle. I have also had some people say that propane doesn't do as well as diesel in the extreme cold and I guess you could potentially take the propane tank inside your heated space uh, although that's probably not recommended and you'd want to make absolutely sure there's no leaks. The cost of this currently is about $900 which is a little more than when I bought it. When you compare that to one of the cheap Chinese diesel heaters that is a lot of money but it is comparable to one of the better quality name brand diesel heaters. The only US supplier that I'm aware of is Van Cafe 
and I know that they've had supply issues all year long. They get a few of these in each month and they usually sell instantly. So if you are looking to get one, keep checking back and they'll have them in stock eventually. From what I understand, Propex has had huge supply chain issues this year. When you buy the unit, you basically get this, you get a couple of ductwork pipes, you get the controls, and you get two bare wires that come out the end here. What I ended up doing is soldering on a 12 volt adapter, cigarette lighter adapter, and I'll put a link to this. Actually, I'll put a link to everything that I'm using here, but I think if I was to do this again, uh, or I may even change it soon, I may switch it over to an uh, Anderson connector because it's gonna get a more reliable solid connection where these can fall out if they're pulled. And to replace the ductwork that came with it, I bought this stuff. Uh, this is just three inch ducts, uh, and it comes in a 16 foot section like this. I just cut it down, cut it, cut it down to what I needed. Uh, and I put on these vents on the end. I really like these vents. These actually came with my diesel heater and I have not been able to find them since. So if you are able to find something like this, definitely drop a comment telling us where we can get it and I'll put it in the description. And unfortunately it is uninsulated. So you definitely do lose some heat on these. So you want it for short runs if possible. But again, it packs up really small where if something that's insulated really wouldn't. And everything's held together using these hose clamps on the end. You've got the thumb tightened hose clamps. So I can just stick it over here and tighten it up. And you get a pack of two of them like this. And I'll put links to these two. The part that most people struggle with and the reason I get most emails is this little bit here. This is a odd fitting because it's British fitting. It's BSP, it's quarter inch BSP. And I initially, when I got this, I just went to my local plumbing store, took this in and said, find me what I need. And five minutes later, they came out from the back with three different fittings. Thanks to the people of the internet, I actually have some things here that I was able to buy off the internet and test out so I can give you guys links to find your own stuff. Now you can do this with just two of these fittings or you can choose all three. The first one you'll need is this, which is gonna be quarter inch BSP female to three eighths inch NPT uh, male. And that just screws on the end here. When you do this part, when you're adding all of these fittings, you will want to add a yellow Teflon tape. I'm not gonna do it just yet because I just wanna show you, but you just screw that on there. From there, you can just add this, which is gonna be 3 8 inch NPT female to a 3 8 inch flare, and that will attach to the regulator. So you can just screw that on directly. But for me, I keep all of this in a little plastic tote, which actually I'll show you. I've got it down here. I say little, in this large plastic tote. Uh, and if I do that, it won't actually fit. So let me take that off because I got this, which is gonna be a 3 8 inch NPT elbow adapter. Uh, and it's just female to male. And that just screws on the end here. And then I can attach my flare adapter, 3 8 inch flare adapter there. And again, you'll want yellow Teflon tape for all of this stuff. And then the final thing to put on there is going to be the regulator here. So I've got a two stage regulator and it's got the 3 8 inch flare thing on there. So that just goes on there and once it's on, it stays. The final thing for you to do is gonna be just check everything, make sure there's no leaks, use soapy water, uh, hook it all up, do this outside and look for bubbles. If you don't get any bubbles, you're good. Hopefully this video helped you out. If you've got comments or suggestions, let me know, especially if you can find a source of these vents for me so I can put those in the description. Let's not argue about buddy heaters. I don't really want to hear it, especially if you're going to use hunker.com as your source. It is not a reliable source. Uh, and the person who wrote that article probably should be fired. Buddy heaters have their uses, but tents and enclosed spaces are not it. Thanks for watching.